like, subscribe, and share to Voices of Linden TV. Welcome to a special edition to Catching Up with Armina. I'm your host, Andrew James, and tonight I'm pleased to have with us in studio Armina herself. Hi, Andrew. How's it going? Doing very well. Welcome aboard. It's so nice to see you after such a long time. So much has changed, of course, I can see. Really? What are you seeing over there? Well, you got the summer look going. Um, it's you're all... I thought I dressed the part. It is springtime. We're, we're having lots of sunshine. The weather is fantastic here in Edmonton. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just a time to be dressed up. And in case you don't know, uh, we're going to learn later. I'm going to talk about it. Granny chic is in. So I'm rocking my granny inspired dress. You go, girl. <laughs> I mean, I know you're no stranger to the show. You've been around in the house and business for many, many long years. Um, I, I, I think for my last conversation, I think you're, you've been in the business for about uh, 14 plus years. Um, if you can jump right into it and just tell us a little bit about what's trending in the housing market at all, if possible. Uh, oh, of course. Absolutely. I'd love to do that. So what we're seeing in Canada in particular, I think we're going to probably hear that it's happening around the world, too, is that housing values have been trending gently upwards uh, on the resale side. But on the building side, it's just gone crazy with uh, drastic increases and it's coming as a shock to many buyers. For those of us that have been in industry, we haven't, in particularly in Alberta, we haven't seen this happen since 2014. The big difference is, though, that back in 2014, while the housing prices were higher, the mortgage rates were also higher. So it actually mm -hmm. cost more to buy a home in 2014 in Alberta more than it does now because we're still at historically low rates across the board. So it's still economical to purchase right now. So well, while the current demand and price increase appear to be mainly driven by COVID or the effects of the pandemic, it's really related to people just looking for the most valuable item right now, which is living space. That's mm -hmm. really what's driving the market so crazy. Like in Toronto, for example, it's going to be a 16.9% increase, one of the highest that, we, that you have ever experienced this year alone, in the past year you're going to be wow. having that. It's so major. In Alberta, we're, being, we're gonna be faced with a 7.9% increase, which to many, they're like, how is this happening when there's a recession mm -hmm. going on, when our province is not doing so well? But it is mainly driven by people realizing that living space is what is needed. You know, more than ever, your home has become your hub. It's your workspace. It's where your kids are learning, it's your restaurant, it's your gym, and it's everything in between. But what's mm -hmm. really happening too, is that we have a major issue with supply and demand. Because of COVID-19, the factories cannot, they have guidelines they have to follow. They're strict guidelines. So you can't have the same amount of workers working in a factory anymore. So they're not able to supply to enough to reach the demand of what's going on. There's a mad rush right now for people wanting to do renovations at home. Everyone's mm -hmm. building a deck. Everyone's all of a sudden turning to handy men and handy women. Yeah. And apart from that, you've got countries like Germany and other countries all over the world that are rushing to Canada looking for our lumber because people no longer are going to wait for things to go back to normal. They're going to start to turn their homes into their environment. And it's summertime, so you're seeing it more than ever. Now, the pandemic has definitely, like, for example, caused, uh, when I talked about supply, like lumber, for example, across mm -hmm. Canada, more so here too, we're seeing it. it's been so crazy. We've had a 100% increase in lumber. And I'm going to call out for you a couple of others because I actually went and checked majority of them. Framing and blocks have gone up 11%. Appliances have gone up 6%. You've got containers stuck outside of Canada that can't come in. There is shortages of things starting to happen and we're starting to see it. You know, drywall's gone up 8%. Aluminum and steel has gone up 10%. So these mm -hmm. things, when you actually accumulate all of them, it's quite an increase in an industry that just wasn't ready for it. Here's the checkpoint. 
it's not stopping people because where you live, how you live, your space has become priceless. Mm -hmm. So people are finding ways to do this. So we actually have here in Alberta, quite a lot of people moving out of province from Toronto, other areas, they're transferring jobs and they're coming here because they're finding it way more economical to purchase a home. It's more affordable to live. So COVID-19 has definitely been an eye opener for people in terms of how they're utilizing their space and how they're going to be living their lives. They're not going to wait anymore. Lifestyle is way more important to them. And they're wanting to bring that outside inside. Very nicely said. You know, I mean, I really appreciate your perspective. You know, um, a lot, and like you said, a lot of people are working from home and, and home is becoming their new reality and their new safe space. What can individuals do to reduce their overall variable operating costs? Oh, there's lots of little things you could do. Uh, but first of all, I, I think that um, it's just knowing what your variable costs are. A lot of people don't know. It's important to have that reality check and knowing. So a variable cost for in case for the people who don't know what variable costs are, it's anything that's not fixed. Anything mm -hmm. where it fluctuates every single month, you don't know what it's going to be. Now, here's the thing, and this might apply more to business owners, uh, you know, because we do our budgets every year. The best thing to do is estimate what you think you're going to be using. But when, for business owners in particular, when you actually get those bills and they come in, go back and check to see that what you estimated that you were going to be spending is actually what you spent because you want to be realistic. So variable costs, for example, can be like your electricity bill, your water bill, your maintenance costs, your food bills, you know, anything that is not fixed in your, in your environment. Now, with us being home more than ever, there are other costs you may not be using anymore, such as getting our nails done, you know, getting our hair, haircuts happening, getting facials, we're not using our transportation as much. So in terms of cutting variable costs, now there's a couple of other things apart from the grocery bills and things like that at home. You can also do simple things in your house to cut down on your electricity bill, for example. You can switch out some of your lights to LEDs. This can actually change your electricity bill, like really affect your electricity bill and save you money. Now, LEDs can sometimes be quite you know, expensive. So my advice to you is look at the rooms that you use the most in, the rooms that you would use the most, so like your kitchen maybe, and like your bedroom may or may not, but areas where you think you do. And if it's four bulbs in your house, go buy some LED lights and put them in. They can actually cause your electricity bill to go down quite a lot. No, something small like that makes a big difference because you may not actually use the lights that are on in other parts of the house as often as those common areas. So something as simple as that. The other thing you could do is go around your faucets, check your toilets, see if you've got water being wasted all the time. You know, it's easy sometimes to not realize where your money is being literally <laughs> drained out of your house without you realizing that it's being drained out of your house. So be smart, go check these things because one little drip is literally pennies going away. The other mm. thing you could do is, and it's quite inexpensive to do, is go and get those little, you can change them out in your taps. They're like low flow extensions to your faucet and they make mm. such a difference to how you spend money. So some other things you could do is change your furnace filter for those of us that have furnaces. First of all, it's the air that's coming into your home, but it also right. helps your furnace to work efficiently. The other thing you can do is make sure that you change, uh, you know, clean out your boiler or your hot water tanks as much as possible. My advice to you too is turn down the heat on your hot water tank. You do not need it to be that hot. And also if you can afford it, buy a hot, a hot water blanket. Uh, tank blanket. It actually pays for itself in the short term and it helps you to conserve the energy and electricity. Make sure you insulate the plugs that are around that hot water tank. It actually makes a big difference on saving you money too. Go around your home and make sure that you, air, you seal all your windows 
These are little things that make big differences in your monthly expenses. Now, one other little thing you can do, learn how to change, like how to buy your own oil sometimes. If you have a buddy system, know how to do that. One of the things I learned a couple of years ago from a good friend is making sure that my car tires, my vehicle tires were always to the right PSI. So Ooh. yes, something as simple as that can actually save you 1% on the gas bill, you know, on your gas bills. Something is increasing your vehicle tire by two PSI will actually affect your gas bills quite, quite drastically. So little, little things, but just make sure you follow the manual and that you're increasing it to what it should be and you're not overdoing it. Um, My advice to you really is variable costs. When you think about it, these are sometimes things that we indulge in when we're in certain moods. So I'm a big emotional checker in terms of checking in with who's in your house. So yes. For me, if you're going to be, you have to be realistic. You have to put aside money for, so the savings that you're saving, you have to make sure you utilize that money properly. Make sure you put money aside for your loved ones, for fun times, for things like that, because it makes no sense saving money. And all of a sudden you get into a bad mood and you're Ubering eating, Uber eats. (laughs) (laughs) Everything on the menu or your dishes. But the thing is, it's important that to me, variable cost is not just the monetary part, but it's variable cost on your emotional and state of mind side of things. So it's important to have that real reality check with yourself to know where your money's going, how you're spending it and what purpose you have for it. And if you're able to save any of it. Now, there are some other parts to variable cost cutting that you could easily do. Depending on your credit card debt, you can easily also call the credit card company, talk to them, see if you can get your rates, you know, reduced. These little things as, you know, paying off a credit card really affects your credit, but also Mm -hmm. helps you to benefit whereby in the future you're able to get a credit card where you can actually get better rates and rewards from it, you know? Simple little Very things nice. that you can do. I mean, I can really get into this more and more, but those are just some little tips about being able to save money on the whole and how to cut your your costs um, down. Excellent. Thank you so much, Armina. I know a lot of students are home. I, schools are closed. A lot of students are doing in-class um, learning from home. A lot of parents are working from home and so on. Can you tell us what you can, like what individuals can do to make their home experience more enjoyable through your oh, own lens? Absolutely. That's the fun part. But before I move on to that, I do want to, I'm a big fan of feng shui. Um, I don't know if you heard of that, but it's a Chinese uh kind of statement about bringing harmony to your home and Mm -hmm. uh, you know having that spatial environment being very harmonious and creating that zen atmosphere and I wanted Mm -hmm. to share with you and this is something that men and women girls and boys can all take part in and it's basically that you should remember to always keep the door closed and your toilet lid down. Feng Shui believes that the toilet is if you leave it open and when you flush, you're flushing away all the positive energy out of your home, a situation that is much lessened when you keep the lid down and the bathroom door closed. Out of sight, out of mind. Hmm. So just the bathroom doors or all the doors in your house? No, just the bathroom door. You know, it, it. it's so funny because um, it's uh, quite interesting how they, how they believe, you know, Simple little things as the placement of a mirror can either bring positive or negative energy into your home. It's good to be aware of these things because it really does make a big difference into how you feel. Like, you know, so many of us, when we're coming home in the afternoon, we care about, you know, how it looks on the outside about what everybody else can see. But we forget Mm -hmm. that how it looks on the inside when we enter it is really the most important thing. When you walk into like a foyer or an entrance that's quite cluttered, you feel that anxiety come on Mm. right away. But when you you walk into your home and it's really decluttered and has that welcoming energy, then your atmosphere totally changes and your behavior changes. It's more welcoming. It's that perception of more what someone's seeing from the outside that we totally forget 
about how we feel on the inside. Mm. Nicely said. What's with the big set of flowers in the background? I know today's a special day. Uh, on behalf of everyone of the Let's Talk show, I want to say happy birthday to our lovely and talented Ermina Sikara. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm quite excited. I feel like the older I get, the wiser I get, the more I learn. And so the flowers are actually uh, going to be part of our topic. Um, it's actually trending right now to have wow. live uh, like plants, you know, plant paradise in your home. So bringing in as much as that plant life into your house can actually change your mood. And, uh, you know, I'm going to be touching on that in a little bit, but I'll probably just get to it. So plenty of natural light allows you to introduce our next trend, which is the plants. Plants bring you so much joy. You know, they make any space beautiful and they positively impact your health by purifying the air and even improving your mood. For me, mm. <laughs> I, I've been killing plants for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this, this plant here, I've managed to keep alive for a very long time. And I, I always say, you know, I talk to it now and I say, I'm surprised you're still here. <laughs> what kind of plant is it? It's like a little cactus. I mean, it's growing. Okay. You know, it's a little prickly and it has texture. <gasps> Hello, your plant can say hi to my plants. I don't have a name <laughs> for my plant. Hello, little Freddy. Hello. <laughs> yes. So I think that's the key thing. You know, we don't um, we don't realize that these little things change our mood mm -hmm. so much. And it, look at us. We're talking about our plants and, and already we're like <laughs> totally different mindset. But think about it, you know, and to, for me, I get up and I smell my hydrangeas all the time. Like they they are so bright. They just remind me of life and you know, just how pretty it can be. It doesn't need to be so concerning all the time. We do have a whole tumultuous world happening out there, but inside here, we can control it, right? So, uh -huh. well, let me tell you a little bit about some new home trends that's happening. Yes. So there are little things that you can do to change your space and make it enjoyable as possible. Home designs and trends are always changing. And due to the pandemic, our focus is actually on two main things how to make it a function, functionable space and creating a calm and joy despite what's going on in the outside world. So here's some tips, easy, inexpensive, fun, and really a great way of creating zen and joy. Painting your walls. Now blues and warm tones are in, but be careful of the blue you choose because blues can be depressing and nobody <laughs> wants depressing in their home. So, like, like, like a dark blue? You know what? It really depends, but some blues can really become depressing. So you want to make sure you choose it, a you that is relaxing. For some yeah. balance, you can infuse colors. Like for me, I look for like splashes of bright colors and like yellows or gold tones go well. And then mm -hmm. remember, because you spend majority of time at home, you want it to be a place where you can exhale, you know? Right. <sighs> you know, I'm home. So just, just choose what resonates with you, but just make sure that it's not like really putting you in a negative mood. Mind you, for me, even a dark blue, like a navy blue, like you said, I think yeah. a navy blue with like yellow cushions, like mustard looking, oh my God, takes me to Morocco for some reason. I don't know why. Can you see it? I can see mm -hmm. it. You know? Of course, yeah. Soul tones. You know, really nice gold picture frames. You know, it, it's easy to start to envision. Can you see the change already? I'm in Morocco. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm gonna paint my walls blue. <laughs> and I think, look, I I did mine in like a dark gray, and it almost looks yeah. blue sometimes. And look yeah. at the splash of the pink. So it's really easy to change it. And this is something yeah. that you can do any part of the world, like in a small space, in a big space, it doesn't matter. So the other thing that's new in home trends, of course, is lightening your windows, depending on the size you have. You know, <laughs> I, I always said size matters. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe 
I said that. But as it relates to Windows, of windows. course. So Thank as you. it relates to Windows, it's very important. If you have huge windows, you can get away with having dark accent curtains. But if you have yeah. smaller windows, you might want to lighten them because it's important that you let all that light in. This is an easy way to make your space feel comfortable. There are many, many benefits to natural light. It can increase your serotonin. For those of us that believe in feng shui, a clean window is a must. Windows represent how you see the world. So windows that offer a fuzzy sideline will ultimately cloud your view. So mm. get those squeegees out. Isn't it amazing? Uh, I'm gonna tell you something. Thought, never thought I, about it, but yeah. You know, I was closing the show home up the other night and I looked out the window and across the fence, I could see this young couple uh, doing their prayers together. He was standing behind her and she was standing in front of him. They had their candle and they were doing their prayers together. And, you know, sometimes that's when you realize when you take the moment to look out the window, there is a whole other life happening out there other yes. than what's happening inside. So it's really important. And, and that's why, you know, you don't realize that these things are truly what's, you don't realize something as simple as cleaning a window can be opening your vision to so much. But yes, yes. that that is exactly, you know, you don't want anything to cloud your view yeah. at all. So let that light in, lighten it up yeah. as much as possible. Yes. And the next thing is let's focus on functionality. We want spaces that you, we can use and live in and that reflects our personalities and make us feel overall more joyful. If you're going to be shopping on furniture, fo focus on something that's multi-purpose. Many of us don't live in grand homes where we have all this space. So with the kids being at home, they each need their workspace. So get something like a foldable desk, you know, one of the very long ones, you set them all up. And then during school time, that's their workstation. They have their earphones on, they're all focused. And then evening time, you fold it away. Everybody puts their backpack like they actually came home from school. And then you have your dining room back. And it's where the family changes, like it becomes another space now, you know, and uh, safe space with, so when you do these safe spacing methods, it can be such a game changer. Uh, what advice would you give to someone um, during this COVID pandemic uh, period? There are little tips that you could do like today that I shared with you that you can simply do, you know, go buy yourself a plant. It's amazing how it can cheer up your life. For, for example, you'll see that my, my plant is in a textured vase. Ceramic mm -hmm. hues are so in. And, and it feels like rather than feeling something that's smooth, you're feeling something with a little bit of texture. It makes mm -hmm. difference because we're not really allowed to touch a lot of things anymore. I know you're looking at your smooth pot there. <laughs> I highly recommend you go out because I was actually going to speak about this. Accessories are the key. You know, I don't know that you're aware of this, but earthy tones, wicker baskets and rattan furniture. So outside is really coming inside. People are wow. craving the tropics. Like all of a sudden, everybody's missing the Bahamas, they're missing Guyana, they're missing Mexico. They want everything to come inside. Yes. So it's easy to change and it's very inexpensive to change your mood by doing simple little things. Think of these little things, go buy, you know, it's going to cost you like, what, 10 bucks to do this? You can mm -hmm. get a three for like maybe under 20 bucks at Costco. So mm -hmm. there, there is not a lot to do. Buy three and give two to another two friends. You know, it's really, really amazing little, little things to do. Buy yourself an abstract painting, little things to just take you away from the moment you're in. You know, these all work to create an organic look that can produce a relaxed, calm vibe. All the little tips I'm giving you can just change, change everything so much. So the other thing, because here's the thing, no matter what's trending, Andrew, mm -hmm. we love what we love. People can't take right. that away from us. You must have right. some knickknacks that you can't give up. I have some knickknacks that I must have, even though they don't go with my, <laughs> my feel. Like we all know that there's things that we love that we just can't. But right. it's important because those things speak to you. It's mm. like you look at them and you're like, remember that time? All of a sudden, your memory's back. <laughs> <You know? laughs> 
<laughs> you know, with that said, though, you're building an ideal environment. So right. make sure that while you're building that environment to cause you to be in that different mood, that you declutter and give away anything that you're not using. Because it's important to surround your, while it's important to surround yourself with things that you love, you don't want your space to become claustrophobic. So with that right. said, keep storage solutions in mind because lots of storage will, will keep you breathing easy in your home while letting you keep what brings you joy. You know, they have a saying, when your space is clutter-free, your psyche stays free of anxiety. Did you know that? I think you're absolutely right. And I think you're onto something there. Yeah, it's amazing because mm -hmm. you just feel so free. Very good. Um, Armina, on behalf of, uh, I think we'll leave it there for today. I look forward to talking to you again, and I would love to see an opportunity of what's trending is specifically as it relates to your newer model homes. I look forward to talking to you again. On behalf of everyone at the Let's Talk show, of course, our executive producer and our director, I want to thank, take this opportunity to thank you very much for being a part of our show today. Thank you oh, very much. Always thank a today. pleasure. You're welcome. And we will be in touch soon. Good night. Good night.